It is an honor to again participate in the Tennessee Elder Justice Conference. I apologize that a tiny mole in a bad place that had to be excised has kept me in Washington, D.C. I want to salute my friend and colleague Aaron Bradley for all his hard work on this conference and also salute all on the planning committee. I'm happy to share this session with two other great friends and colleagues, Bill Benson and Lance Robertson, each doing different things have been difference makers in the field of elder justice. And you will be introduced to another colleague today, Laura Borth, who was a policy and advocacy advisor to the Elder Justice Coalition and was with you last year. The state of elder justice in all candor is unclear, not for lack of activity, but because of bigger issues. We are now only seeing how the fiscal responsibility or debt ceiling agreement has taken over Washington. Its key provision calling for a two-year spending cap is of deep concern. For elder justice, the issue within the issue is what fiscal year do you base the caps on, 2022 or 2023? If 2022, Adult Protective Services were not even funded under the regular appropriation process and the long-term care ombudsman got money that was less than before. If you use 2023, the ombudsman APS program would get $15 million and the ombudsman closer to $40 million. No matter what the final outcome later this year in both programs, the fiscal cliff is going to be reached. We went from $188 million to $15 million in adult protective service funding, a very serious issue, because that was emergency money separate from the appropriation process. Our strategy now is to better understand the rules of the debt ceiling to see if individual programs within an area can still get increases. On the more positive side, we do have an Elder Justice Reauthorization and Modernization Act introduced in both the House and the Senate. Senate bill authored by Senators Wyden and Casey, the House bill offered by Congressman Richard Neal and Congresswoman Suzanne Bonamici with now close to 10 co-sponsors. It's a major initiative investing more than $4 billion to build long overdue infrastructure for elder justice. Laura will review the specific comments, uh, the pr specific provisions after my comments. Right now, the most important thing as advocates we can do is to increase the number of co-sponsors on both bills. Tennessee is vital. You need to educate and inform Senators Blackburn and Haggerty about co-sponsoring the elder justice reauthorization bill and by doing so, making the bill, which it should be, bipartisan. Senator Blackburn is especially important as she is on the Finance Committee, where this bill will be considered and moved to the full Senate. Senator Haggerty is key for another reason. He's on the Appropriations Committee, which is in charge of funding. We need his help to get APS and long-term care ombudsman funded properly for fiscal year 24. Also, reach out to your 10 House members to get their support, especially Representative Kustoff, who is on the Ways and Means Committee, which is the House Committee in charge of elder justice, and Congressman Fleischman, who is on the Appropriations Committee. This is the year of anniversaries. The Elder Justice Coalition is 20 years old, and the Elder Justice Act is now 13 years old. We of the Elder Justice Coalition are still fighting to get this 13-year-old law updated, modernized, and funded. It's a fight where we need all help from you as advocates and as frontline professionals. This conference is an important convening. Let it also be a call to action so we can say with pride that we are achieving elder justice in America by working to prevent elder abuse. Thank you.